My name is Jacqueline Wright, and I'm the director of Stiffy, which we made in March 2005, filming on Wednesday, mixing and recording the soundtrack on Thursday, and delivering on Friday. About two months later, it screened in Cannes. None of that would have been possible without my excellent cast and crew. Alice Lowe was the writer and star of the film. I've been working with Alice since 1998. I do have a tendency in my work <laughs> to portray weirdos and freaks. Uh, I don't think they're actually that strange and I never expect people to be offended and they always are. When you watch it with an audience, most people are just guffawing and saying how sick it is. I, I really like the fact that it was quite daring comedy, <laughs> very dark humour. Some people might think it's a very dark theme, necrophilia, but I think what we've done with this, the concept is we sort of subverted it by having him fall in love romantically with the corpse, it's not actually really that sexual. It's more like he courts her in an old-fashioned way by offering her a flower and gifts. And, and I think in that way it's very sweet. Probably my first and only necrophiliac role. I, I, I don't know. You never know what will happen in the future. But I'm, I'm proud to, as an actor, I'm proud to portray all facets of human uh, conditions, you know, people are different and that was, you know, it was, a, it was a, you know, he, he, he really loved that corpse and you know, that was, that's a nice thing, you know, you know, it's unconventional but that makes it quite, um, quite touching that he's gone that extra step, which most people dare not do for some reason. Stiffy was made for the straight eight competition. You're given a reel of Super 8 film and you have to shoot the visuals in order, editing and camera. So there are no second takes, there are no second chances and there are no special effects. It's a very disciplined way of working. The straight eight challenge appeals to me because I completely agree that that I think people get very lazy in filmmaking and uh, I like the discipline, the fact that you've got to you've got to get it right. Well, acting in a film like that where you're not allowed to you worry that you're going to just go, oh, oh, sh oh, shit, or something like that, and just completely just ruin it. During the wheelchair dancing scene, I was having to film that and try not to laugh. What's unusual about Stiffy is it has a whole arc of a story, and we managed to actually get that in. Not many people actually managed to do that with a straight eight, which I think is why it's gone from strength to strength, and people seem to really like it. One of the most difficult parts was getting Steve Warham's costume and finding a hospital orderly's outfit. It fit me like it was, it was like it was made for me, like it had been tailored. I was so pleased, and uh, just because white makes you automatically look good, I think. And uh, you know, I just wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to take it home and wear it home. But it's one of my favourite things I've ever worn. Stiffy was based on a sketch that Steve and I did. Which was about two people who were in love, but they were day centre. And they were like, we called them the posh and becks of the day centre. I was a woman in a, in a wheelchair, and he was my husband or boyfriend. And we were in love, and we sang I've Got You, Babe, to each other. You know, they were stars in their own right. The music was composed by Jane Watkins. I recall giving her quite an odd brief. I asked for a cross between the Sonny and Cher track, I've Got You, Babe and Simon and Garfunkel's The Boxer. As always, Jane did a marvellous job. I've recorded some slightly spooky flutes and pieced those together with Alice's breathing at the top, which made it really quite sinister. And then you kick into something really quite happy and lovely. It's kind of like a grunting love ode, uh, where Alice would sing a lovely, you know, sort of high melody, and then I was recorded sort of doing sort of Tom Jones like grunts the ladies got in, in the rear rear time got very hot and bothered. I don't think I've ever sung in such such an overtly sexual way. Because me and Steve sang the tune, it meant that even though we didn't have dialogue in the film and also oh, my character was dead, we still had a conversation and I think that works really well because you're feeling happy and sort of very romantic and light about what you're watching when actually what you're watching is quite dark. I do like this idea of an equal impossible relationship so I think there's got a real pathos to it when you know you have a man fall in love with an ape or something. I, I think it's really, I like things like that where you have something that's sweet but at the same time sinister. And I think that 
Thanks for some stuffy upbringing.